Welcome to another edition of Let's Talk Criterion, and in this edition we travel back to 1932 and take a look at the original Scarface, directed by Hard Hawks, being released on 4K UHD. featuring notorious gangsters were very popular in Hollywood as the Roaring Twenties came to an end. The institution of prohibition in 1920 led to an explosion in crime, and Hollywood soon realised that this was what audiences wanted to see on the cinema screen. As the Twenties came to an end, along with the introduction of talking pictures, making the use of sound effects and dialogue-driven narrative the perfect bed to sell these exciting gangster tales to audiences. They certainly had a lot of gangsters to choose from, with Dillinger, Babyface Nelson and Pretty Boy Floyd. The Roaring Twenties from 1939, with Humphrey Bogart and James Cagney of course, is now in the Criterion Collection. We also have The Public Enemy and Little Caesar. The Public Enemy starring James Cagney and Little Caesar starring Edward G. Robinson, both of course releasing in 1931, and Scarface releasing in 1932. Gangster films were soaring in popularity at the US box office. Scarface is a 1932 pre-code film also known as Shame of a Nation, and it's directed by Hard Hawks, who was a popular choice at the time. The film stars Paul Mooney as Italian immigrant gangster Antonio Tony Carmonte, who violently rises through the Chicago gangland with a supporting cast that includes George Raft and Boris Karloff. Carmonte's rise to power dovetails with his relentless pursuit of his boss's mistress, while his sister pursues his best hitman. Now that's all the plot I'm going to give you in case you haven't seen the film. In an overt tie into the life of notorious mob boss Al Capone, the St Valentine's Day Massacre is depicted in the film. Hart Hughes purchased the rights to Armitage Trail's novel and commissioned a screenplay to be written by Ben Hecht. Now, Ben Hecht wrote this screenplay in just 11 days, and the film was produced by Caddo Films, and it was before production code had come into effect. But the then in effect Hayes Code still insisted on major alterations being made, although this was a more lenient code overall. Now these alterations included a prologue condemning gangsters, an alternate ending to the more clearly reprehend Carmonte and the alternative title of Shame of a Nation. Now thankfully that was later ditched with the more accessible title given to it of Scarface. After battling with censorship, the film was due to be released in theatres in New York on April the 9th, 1932, with a grand premiere being planned. But the New York censor rejected the showing of the film in New York. Hughes threatened to sue censorship boards for blocking the release of the film. Now, at the request of Will Hayes himself, Jason Joy convinced the strict censor boards to allow its release, and eventually all state and municipal censorship boards allowed Scarface to be screened theatrically, accepting only the cut version of the film. Audience attendances were positive, and so was critical feedback, and even Al Capone himself reportedly liked the film, and he even obtained his own private version. Now, the National Board of Review named Scarface as one of the best pictures of 1932. Now, the screenplay author Ben Hecht did criticise Paul Mooney's performance, however. He claimed that Mooney betrayed his character as too silent and moody, more similar to Hitler. And Boris Karloff was also singled out for criticism with his English accent as being hardly suitable for his role of Tom Gaffney. Hawks shot Mooney as though he were a wild animal, trying to capture the character's sheer brutality. 
Now, the film also features innovative camera work and editing. But the action behind the camera was equally fascinating, with Hard Hawks continually clashing with Hughes, the producer, during the production. Now, it's fair to say that Scarface has in fact set the standard for gangster movies that were to follow. And it got a remake, of course, from Brian De Palma in 1983, which was set in Miami, and that starred Al Pacino, a Cuban antagonist, and with some lines lifted from the original film. Now, this film is hailed as the most excitingly inventive talking picture to be made in Hollywood before Orson Welles' Citizen Kane was made almost a decade later, and Mooney's performance in the film as Tony Carmonte was the most grandly screen-bursting performance ever seen at that time in theatres. Although Citizen Kane outpaces Scarface in social history, and of course in its comprehensive reconsideration of narrative form, it cannot touch Hawks' film in perverse contradictions, and indeed in psychological underworlds. Scarface still remains, even now, a high point of cinematic modernity. Now, this new restoration was sourced from a print rather than a negative. It's listed as a new 4K restoration, though, so I'm guessing that this is as good as this film is ever going to look. Unless, of course, they uncover new material. Now, it's pretty clean throughout, certainly on the picture side. The thin green is quite well handled, and the contrast also is pleasingly balanced. As for audio, there is some hiss in places on the soundtrack, but considering how old this film actually is, it still sounds pretty good overall. Now, Criterion brings this classic gangster film to the collection as a 4K UHD Blu-ray combo, and it has the following features. New 4K digital restoration with uncompressed mono soundtrack. We've one 4K UHD disc of the film, and one Blu-ray, as usual, with the film and these special features. An alternate ending from the censored version of the film. New conversation that's taken place with author Megan Abbott and actor Bill Hader. New interview with the film scholar Leigh Jacobs on director Howard Hawks's innovative use of sound and editing. And there's an essay by the critic Imogen Sarah Smith, as she, of course, is a regular contributor to the Criterion Collection. And the very striking cover art is new, and it's designed by Mark Chiarello. Scorpius has a running time of 95 minutes, it's in black and white, and has an aspect ratio of 135 by 1. And it joins the collection on Tuesday the 12th of November in the US, and on Monday the 18th of November here in the UK, a spine 1239. And of course, because it's released in the US during the month of November, you can collect it at 50% off at the Barnes & Noble Criterion sale. In the next edition, we feature Spine Number 2. I'm very excited that this film is getting its upgrade finally. It's none other than Akira Kurosawa's 1954 classic Seven Samurai, coming to the collection in 4K UHD. So until then, from me, as always, it's goodbye, and above all, good Criterion viewing. <laughs>